I don't see it anywhere. I brought the lighter, but we can't get started unless we brought the box. Do you see the box? Oh. Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. I'm Ron, and today I'm gonna to be doing a long-term review of our MSR Whisperlite International Stove. This one right here, this one that I have in this bag. This is everything inside this bag. Yeah, originally we, uh, we got this stove, oh, it's been coming up on 12 years now, I guess. And it's part of our bike touring kit. But over the years, we've naturally, we, you know, we'll use it for hiking, backpacking. Of course, hiking and backpacking would be about the same thing, wouldn't it? So how about hiking, kayaking, and our car camping trips that we've done? So <laughs> yeah, but really it got its most use when Petra and I took our real long bike touring trip from December or from 2013 to 2015 we spent 769 days traveling around the world and during that time this stove got used it got it got its workout and it it paid for itself tenfold we estimate we we use this thing for well over a thousand times not just for making our water in the morning for coffee but we also would cook proper meals um, it takes a little finesse, but you can do truly proper meals. It isn't just designed for boiling water. And I'm gonna link up here, because we, we actually did a video a while back, I think up here, maybe over here. I, I can't quite figure that piece out with YouTube, but I'll also put a link down below that shows us making this meal. And it's a proper meal. And it's something that we did as we traveled, unless we went out sometimes. Typically though, we cooked a hot meal ourselves every day on the road. Um, and these were proper meals. We're talking, you know, you'd be surprised what you can do with this stove. And when I set this up, I'm going to try to walk you through what I would do or what we would do to uh, to simmer, to keep the flame as low as possible, where you could make proper meals. Okay, so why did we choose the International Whis Whisperlite International over the regular Whisperlite? The main thing for us is because of the fuel. With the International, you can use up to three different types of fuel, and the regular whisper light you're restricted to one one fuel is my understanding I, I have never used that stove so I can't comment on it but I can tell you this that the the international will use we know for sure at least two fuels initially when we first bought the stove and being in the states we used white gas it was readily available pretty you know any Walmart or Target where they sold camping supplies you could get white gas and that stuff works great it's clean, it burns efficiently, but it's also very expensive. When we traveled on our big trip and we flew from DC to Madrid, Spain to start our, or to continue on with our big trip, I should say, we're already like six weeks into it. We looked for white gas, we couldn't find it. So we were kind of forced to start using regular unleaded fuel at that time. This was in 2013. Ever since then, that's all we've used. Um, you know, what's great about that is it's a lot cheaper than white gas. It's available around the world. And it's, it's just, it's cheap. <laughs> the downside of using regular gas as opposed to let's say white gas is the regular gas or the unleaded fuel has a tendency, it soots up more and it requires you to clean your stove more often than you would with the white gas. To be honest, I don't even remember using or how much I had to clean it before with white gas because it's been so long. It's been, what, six years? Coming up almost seven years since we've used white gas. I just make it a habit to clean the stove regularly. You can tell when it starts needing cleaning anyway. The flame starts petering out a little bit and it's really pretty easy to, you know, to clean out. And I'm gonna show you that when we move on to that piece of the review when I set it up and I'll talk about some of the stuff then. So we're on the topic of fuel. I wanna, I wanna mention this though. Here in America, we have ethanol-based fuel. And if, if you do use that fuel, pull your pump out after each use. We have used it, it still burns okay, but we, we, don't, leave, we don't leave our pump in because the pump is plastic, the O-rings, and ethanol-based fuels has a tendency to really eat up plastic and don't use it. If you can get ethanol-free fuel, that's what we would use. And we have left our pump in while we use that fuel. Again, I mean, it's probably not smart to leave it in for weeks or months at a time, but if you're traveling, if it's in for a couple days, it's not gonna 
we have never experienced any issues. And now the reliability, I don't really know how much I can say about the reliability other than the fact that it has never once let us down, not once. Even on its worst day when it wasn't running clean, we were still able to eat. It's not ideal, but it worked. So I don't know how much more I can say about the reliability. I know prior to making this video, I, we did some research and we've come across a few reviews where there was some negative comments about the reliability, the moving parts, this and that. I, I don't know, I can't speak for those folks. I don't know what their experience was, but I can tell you this. The stove is pretty straightforward. Um, and again, it's never once let us down. Now I will say, as I was mentioning with the fuel, if you're using regular fuel, you will need to clean it more often than you would probably with white gas. But I don't need, like I said, I don't even remember the last time I used white gas or what the frequency of cleaning was using that as opposed to regular fuel. Along the lines of reliability, the stove itself, now, there's no moving parts on the stove that I, I mean, other than the legs that you roll around to, you know, stand it up. The pump, we have had to replace a few O-rings over the course of the, you know, 12 years we've had it. Again, though, it's very easy to repair. And when you order the kit, the, the base kit, the base stove, what you're gonna get, which right here inside this bag, inside what you're looking at, we have, we actually have the Expedition service kit that we ordered extra, but it comes with a kit, a base kit. It's very small. It comes with the stove, comes with a, like a windshield. I think the thing that on, that's on bottom is like a, like a, like a heat shield, I guess it is, or something. I don't know. It's keep you from keeping burning the ground up. And it comes with a pump. We got the pump. We got two of these pumps, two original pumps. Um, very easy to repair. I've had to replace the O-ring here. In fact, I'm gonna to link to a video where I show replacing that down below and quite possibly, if I can figure it out up here, there'll be a, showing you that video too, how to repair that. I did that pretty easy. Again, everything comes in the kit and you use this tool. Clean. And the stove. I know I mentioned I was gonna tear this apart and show you how to clean it, but you know what, I'm gonna save that for another video because I get a feeling this video is gonna be long enough. But just so you know, it's, again, the hardest part is probably putting it back together, getting the legs lined up. All you do is you, you, essentially you take this off and then the legs slide off. And I'm gonna go and put this back on. And what you're doing, when you take this apart to clean it, you're grabbing this rod and you basically slide it in and out roughly a dozen times, two dozen times, and that cleans the buildup that's inside of here, which will allow it to burn cleaner. So let's go ahead and move these legs around. Okay. Now one thing you're gonna wanna keep handy is the um, oil. You're gonna wanna put oil down inside of here because there is an o-ring in here before you slide this on and again this can only go one way and if you, you go to try to put it in backwards you're going to notice it, it, it won't fit one side's wider than the other it only go one way and, and here i'm messing up actually it's good to show you this if you slide this in you know you're wrong because you can't lock it down so you want to take this back out it's one thing you want to keep an eye on, keep this at the top. And then you just simply flip that over and lock it into place. Okay. Now something I like to use, because if you notice, you could try getting that, but it doesn't always want to seem to work. So what I like to do too, is I'll keep a stick or something nearby Sometimes you just want to prop that up. Otherwise, a lot of times what happens is this is so stiff or, and you'll lay this down and it'll sit up like that. So just keep that handy. Okay, before we do that, what you need to do since I just put the pump in, you're gonna to want to pump it. I'm doing it a few times just to get it started. And actually, I'm doing this backwards, I guess because I'm, I'm filming for you guys. 
Normally this would go like this because I don't want to reach over the flame. Okay, this way I'm, I'm in control right here instead of reaching over the flame and burning myself. But after you pump it, you're gonna to wanna to crack this open and you'll hear it. You can hear the fuel going and it, be quick though. You just wanna get this moist. The wick, all this down here, you're gonna get wet with fuel. Do not allow it to fill up. I mean, you can, but I wouldn't. Just get it wet and be done with it. And then you light it. And you just let it heat up. And while that's going, typically you will go ahead and slip your windshield around. Warms up the metal. And what's gonna happen is as it's heating up, the flame will start to die down. Before it dies down, you're gonna to want to, you're gonna to wanna to crack open the fuel again. If you do it too soon and the flame is too high, you're gonna get a really tall yellow flame, such as that. Just turn it back off, let it die down. Sometimes you have to just work it a little bit, but for sure you don't want to keep the flame really high. Eventually, it's gonna to go to the blue flame, or pretty close to the blue flame anyway. I was gonna tell you how, how we learned how to cook with it. You notice I only pumped it up a few times. So yeah, we, we, you, you, you don't pump it up super hard, just a few times. Unless you're just gonna boil water, then that's fine, you can go full blast. But what we do if we're gonna cook a meal, now you see I got a proper flame going. What I would do is I'll turn this all the way off and then just barely, just barely crack it open. Maybe back it in just a little bit. And I think a combination of just barely opening it, I mean just literally just barely opening it and not having a lot of pressure in here helps keeps the flame pretty, pretty minimalized. And that's it, that's a, that's a good flame right there. And this is using regular unleaded fuel, ethanol free of course. And uh, yeah, so for I don't know, depending on the f price of fuel, 30 cents to 50 cents, we have, how many, probably five meals easily, along with coffee in the mornings and stuff. I mean, easily off to this little bit of fuel. I think actually when we were traveling, we would, probably about every two weeks, we, we would top off our bottles. We never ran out, because you didn't want to run out. And yeah, so there you go. That's your Whisper Light International running off of regular fuel. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it off for you. Or you can go full blast if you want to. And you pump it up more if you really want even a higher flame. But never, never needed that. You just turn it off. Eventually it'll go out. So yeah, it really wouldn't do me any good to tear this apart and clean it for you because it is burning good. Now, if it's running dirty, you'll get, if it needs a cleaning, you won't get this flame. It'll be like a yellow, it just, it won't get super hot. It won't, it won't do this. And when that's happening, that's when you need to take time and clean it out. But yeah, that's a good flame. Yeah, baby. And there you go. I'm gonna go ahead and let that die down. Also, what you'll notice too, when it needs to be cleaning, when you take this apart, you're gonna have a lot of fuel that drips out of the hose. So just so you know, that's, that happens too. I'm not gonna touch it right now. Um, the one thing I forgot to show you before I hooked it all up, which you need to get, I know I'm gonna say you need to be in a habit, whereas I skipped it, of course, but because I'm trying to think of everything else to do here, is you wanna shake the stove like that and of course right now you're hearing the legs jiggling but inside of there you'll hear the the needle there's a needle at the bottom and you'll hear it on a on a jet going it, it's making a tapping sound you want to do that it helps clean out the jet as well all right so after the stove cooled down i disassembled it 
clean my hands up a little bit because now we're going to crack open that box that was tossed at me in the very beginning. So here we go. So I guess you could call this kind of a review box opening. And I'm also using my Gerber, which I found in Lapland, Finland during our world trip. I found it in a, it was, oh, it was a restroom out in the middle of nowhere. Nobody around, so I couldn't take it to uh, Lost and Found, and I've been carrying it ever since. All right, safety first, put the blade away. Put that down. And what do we got in the box? We have ourselves another expedition service kit. Another fuel pump. And we have ordered ourselves the new, the newer model of the International. We have so much trust and faith in that one that we bought another one because we are finding ourselves sometimes doing separate trips. Petra may go out on a backpacking trip with, trip with her female friends. And I may want to go off on my motorcycle with my brother or by myself. So we've had this contention between us, this fighting between us over the stove. Who gets to take it for what weekend? So shouldn't be an issue anymore. <laughs> so here we go. That's what was thrown at me. So let's go ahead and crack this open. Wow, brand new. Although I gotta say, after 12 years, this bag is held up pretty good. And it's got a few holes in it. But it's been used, right? That's what it's for. All right. So what you get is the windshield. I think that's called the heat shield. A book. Brand new international stove, and yes, as I mentioned before, it has the different legs. Oh wow, okay. And yeah, this is neat. The stove we have, you notice, actually, okay, these, it yeah, looks a little bigger. The wire legs, if you will, the stainless steel wire legs, have little notches you have to slide into to keep them in place for moving. This one here, you just go all the way until it stops. There is no little notches. Very neat. Now, it's hard to imagine our stove looked like this 12 years ago. Well, it won't look like this for long. And let's see, you also get a pump, a brand new pump. So that's what all comes in here. Oh, and your little mini kit, which is the tool I mentioned. Gives you another jet and the O-ring. That O-ring, if I'm not mistaken, is the one that goes here, which I'd mentioned before. I will link, I have had to replace this and I think I did a video for that. And if I, my memory serves me correct, I'm getting older, so that's kind of slipping on me. I will post that video, as I mentioned before, to the left here, I think is where they go. And you don't get much. Now, and the reason for the separate jet is if you're gonna use, I think it's kerosene, you use a different jet for their white gas and a regular fuel. You don't have to swap out the the uh, jet and of course inside of this is just another pump i'm not going to open that up it looks the same as this one here kind of excited and of course the expedition kit which you can never go wrong with having enough o-rings and stuff even you know you're not really using them that much so anyway well that's kind of my, my review or our review I gotta give props to Petra. She's working the camera behind the scenes there. One day I'll get her out front here. Uh, we are a team. And uh, yeah, if you, uh, if you like the review, give it a thumbs up, share it. If you have any questions, please ask down below. I, if I'm not mistaken, I, you know, our, our community is still pretty small where I can answer every question. I don't foresee ever getting so big that I can't answer all questions. And I try to give you you know, straight answers, the best, you know, my answers, not some something I read or my experience or our experience of our equipment. Um, so, yeah, 
kind of excited to get using this one here. I mean, it's same stove, it looks a little different. And I guess we'll leave it at that. Thanks for uh, hanging out with me. See you.